Hello everyone, this video is on the four effects of original sin. And the first effect is the darkening of the intellect. The intellect is what thinks, and to, for it to be darkened, connotes that there's an absence of light which helps us see the truth. And this means that the mind has trouble recognizing moral truths. And this could be like basic moral principles, such as the fact that uh, a good result does not justify doing evil, so the end doesn't justify the means. You might lose sight of that fact. And you might lose sight in terms of evaluating particular moral actions. So actually looking at a concrete situation and judging, is this right or is this wrong? So some examples might be when people talk about the Italian dictator uh, Benito Mussolini, say, oh yeah, he did some bad stuff, but you know, he made the, rain, the trains run on time. And it's like, well, trains running on time is good, but that doesn't kind of justify a dictatorship. Or the idea that we shouldn't use drugs, so in this case, cocaine. All right. So if you're having trouble recognizing, well, why, why is snorting coke a bad idea? That would point to an effect of original sin, the darkening of the intellect. Now, why does this happen? Well, it happens because of a couple of things. Well, first of all, the mind might be distracted from focusing on the question. So you really want to do drugs and you think, oh, this is going to be an amazing feeling. And that little voice in your head, your conscience is saying, oh, but this is really bad for you and you could be arrested and it's highly illegal. And you just kind of brush off the question. So one of the reasons that the intellect is dark is just because we choose not to think about the moral principles involved. And so it remains in darkness. The other way is that it gets distorted by our evil desires. And so getting what we want suddenly seems so important that we just got to have it and we brush off considerations and it, it makes the, the difficulty of doing the right thing appear so large and it makes the evil of doing what is wrong appear much smaller than it actually is. It's kind of like stepping in front of a funhouse mirror. You know, your head looks three feet tall and your butt is ten feet wide and totally distorted picture of reality. And in addition to a darkening of the intellect, we can speak of a weakening of the will. So the will is what chooses, the intellect is what knows. And the will has difficulty choosing good and avoiding evil. And this is true even when we know what the right choice is. So for instance, I know that I should be getting more exercise than I do. And if I exercised more, I'd look more like this guy instead of more like, well, me. But I think, oh, exercise is hard and I don't want to do that. And, and so that's why, you know, I look the way I do. So it's a, it's a weakening of the will. I know what the right thing to do is, but I just can't seem to make myself do it. Or this molten chocolate cake. I know I don't need that. But I look and I think, oh, gosh, doesn't that look delicious? And should I have one? Should I not? And at the end of the day, it's, waiter, I'll take two. Or it might be the case that, well, I want to do the right thing, but, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm scared of what people will think. Ah, that's my scared face, by the way, when I haven't shaved in two weeks, which has never happened in my life. Um, so that, that might be another thing that, that weakens the will. Like the will can't, can't do what it knows is right, even when the truth is known. St. Paul gives a picture of this in Romans chapter 7. He says, for I do the good that I want, for the good that I want, I do not do. But I practice the very evil that I do not want. So it's this divided heart, like the want to do the right thing, but there's a weakness there, I can't do it. The third effect of original sin is death. So Adam and Eve, before the fall, our first parents were created with original justice. And this is a supernatural gift. It's a miraculous gift. It's not part of nature. That they would not have died because why? Well, they had this incredible uh, friendship with God and that the holiness... The, the life of the soul that they have would have also miraculously st sustained their bodies as well. But they lost that. They lost that through original sin. And so what happens? So death enters the world. St. Paul says, just as through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And this death, death came to all inasmuch as all sinned. Now the last effect of original sin is concupiscence. It's from the Latin concupere, which means to be very desirous of. But here, we're talking about sensual desires contrary to reason. So it's, it's the desire for a pleasure and it wanting that pleasure, even if it's no good for us. So that could mean having that second molten chocolate cake uh, that I talked about, even though I know it's no good for me. That would be an example of concupiscence. Or it could be the desire for sexual pleasure. So St. Augustine said, Lord, give me chastity, <laughs> but not today.
Why? Because he was enjoying sex with his girlfriend too much. So, you know, that, that concupiscence can be the result of saying, Ooh, look at those sexy eyes. Ooh, I'm magically drawn to you. You know, and oh, look at that pretty face. Come hither, my dear. You know, or another good looking face. Ladies, calm yourself down. It'll be all right. So those are the four effects of original sin. Darkening of the intellect, weakening of the will, death, and concupiscence.